What is up everyone, Old Willow Scrub here. We are back with more Cold of Seth Revolt. Uh, this next book is actually the book that I used to get through Quest 4 Mission 8. It's where a good shift is in the story, and this is also the quest that you unlock uh, Rich Packs. But first, one of the best ways to beat the story is to make an Old Willow or Kelpie book, or a combination of that. This one is my um, Kelpie Willow book. You can beat the story without this book, but it's a little bit easier with it, because you're able to trap multiple areas, multiple spots because of the inherent abilities of Old Willow and Kelpie. Um, if you're starting off in Call of Seth Revolt, you can buy booster packs. And the first one you can buy is Economy. Never really buy Economy. It's not really worth it. Uh, what you should do is wait until Quest 3 Mission 1 when you beat it to unlock what's known as Standard Packs. Economy only contains neutral creatures and only the first pack, the, the first block, the starter block. Uh, standard has normal, strange, and rare from the first three blocks. All the, what you see in the, in the PNG on the right, that is what you can get. If I'm not mistaken, none of those cards are in, like, you have to wait for them. Like, when you get rich packs or another pack. All of these can be acquired in the second pack known as Standard. Alright, so let's take a look at it. Just to let you know, this pack is, this book is not going to beat, uh, multiplayer very well. This book is literally just to get to rich packs as quick as you can. And the reason for that is when you get rich packs, let's look at a rich pack actually. So you have economy and you have standard. And then at quest four, mission eight, you unlock city of salvation or city of salvation pack and you unlock a rich pack. Okay, as you can see, economy only gives you five normal. Standard gives you five normal, three strange, and one rare. And rich pack gives you six strange and four rare. The rich pack is going to help you fill out your card, your, your catalog the most. Rich pack will also, also contains every block. Once you unlock the Sleeping Gods pack, you can get those cards in the Rich Pack as well. But Rich Pack will give you everything from Starter to City of Salvation. And a lot of those cards are really great for books like this, other books in general. But let's look at the Old Willow Kelpie book. So the first creature we have in here is Fire Drake. Fire Drake is in here for offensive, and when there's a fire, when there are fire creatures in play, it gains strength plus number of fire creatures in play times five. So if you have, you know, four fire creatures in play, it's gonna gain an additional 20 strength. Uh, it's, it's better if you have it in a pure fire book, but in this one it actually does its purpose pretty well. We have two gas clouds. Uh, gas clouds neutralize half of damage received from normal attacks, and unfortunately can't use an armor, but the picture you see on the Thing that looks like a little helmet, that's Armit, that's a tool. Old or, um, Wall of Ice and Gas Cloud can use that. Okay, we're gonna look at that in a moment. 
And here we have two King Varon. He is an amazing land holder and um, attacker. King Varon is normal. So, remember from the last book I did, which was Sword of Pluck, will increase its attack by 40, and then give it critical, because it's a normal creature. So, King Varon with the Sword of Pluck is going to do 150 normal damage. If your opponent can't neutralize that or reflect it, they're basically dead. Uh, next we have two Old Willow. It costs quite a bit to be able to place it. it you need to have two Firelands available, or two Firelands in your possession. If you, when you unlock Rich Packs, you can get cards, I think it's Exchange or Replace, which lets you put down a creature from your hand uh, and re literally replace it with a creature that's in play. You can put down any creature without having to pay any extra cost. So cards like that are great for land restriction creatures, or if your creature had to have you discard a card. That would also be helpful. Next we have Red Ogre. Ogres in this, in Cold Decept Revolt, are actually way better than in previous Cold Decept games. Ogres used to be 30 strength, 40 HP creatures. They actually increased them plus 10 on both accounts. So now that it has 50 HP, it's a little bit easier to work with the ogres. Now we're into our water creatures. We have one gelatinous wall. The reason why you see weird things like one of the drakes and then one gelatinous wall is this is literally the, the book that I use. Okay, this is... You don't have to use this. This is just to show you what you could use. Never follow a book exactly like you see. Always run with it. You can say, you know, I don't want Gelatinous Wall, I want another Kelpie. Or, I don't want Gelatinous Wall or Fire Drake, I want something else. Go for it. Gelatinous Wall is nice though. Uh, 10 strength, 50 HP, and when it receives normal damage, you gain 5 times that damage as mana if your creature survived. So Gelatinous Wall with, like, Magic Shield would be at 80 HP. So if Gelatinous Wall were to take 50 damage, you would gain 250 mana. If you use something like Storm Shield and you neutralize attacks, well obviously you're not taking damage, you're not gaining mana. But it, neutralizing it, you could you know, save a land in case you have Kelpie, and you want to put Kelpie down. Okay, Kelpie, like Old Willow, uh, when it's on its matching element, so Old Willow on a fire land, Kelpie on a water land, it stops all passing scepters other than the user, other than the person who owns it, um, from moving. So if they were going to originally haste themselves or try to fly past it. As soon as they go to walk past it, Kelpie stops them. Kelpie's a little bit weaker than Old Willow. Old Willow is 20 strength and 40 HP. Kelpie does have more strength. Kelpie can use weapons, but its HP is only 30. So, it can be blasted off the map a little easier. That's why in this book there's a fat body to save it. Gonna look at that in a moment. Next creature we have is King Tortoise. Now, this is where you can change things up. King Tortoise is not bad. 50 strength, 60 HP. You could also put in a uh, giant Nautilus. It's 10 strength and 70 HP. The reason for these land holders. Um, put down King Tortoise on a waterland, 
bump that thing up to level 3 at least, and then when you can, swap it out for Kelpie. That is my plan with, with King Tortoise or Giant Nautilus. Use them as land holders. Put down your, your beefiest creatures, that's why King Varon is great for fire. The same with Gas Cloud. If you have, you have Armit in your hand, um, Gas Cloud on a high level land is pretty annoying to deal with. And the next and last creature we have is Wall of Ice. Wall of Ice can't use armor. Uh, it can't use scrolls. It can use weapons, and it can use tools. And we have a tool right next to it, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But in battle, Wall of Ice gets plus 20 HP. If you played just about all the other cul-de-sac games, except for one or two, uh, Wall of Ice would actually give you plus 30 HP. So I kind of miss that 10 HP extra. But still, 60 HP in battle, on the water land. That's up there. Okay, so now let's look at the items. There's not many. We have two armits. Armit reduces your strength by 10, but increases your HP by 40. And it's a tool. And I have it in there just for old war for wall of ice and for gas cloud. Because both of them can use tools, they can't use armor, so both their HPs can go up 40. Now, if you actually look at Coldest Central, you will find my HP guide, which explains the difference between two HP numbers you see. You see 30 slash 30. The first 30 is what you would call a base HP, and then the final 30 is maximum HP. And in battle, if you can increase your base HP, it makes it harder for scrolls to kill you. Everything can be explained in the guide. You can get the link uh, to the site below if you click on the Coldest Central panel. But give you know Gas Cloud plus 40 HP. Now without land bonus that's already 70 HP so your opponent is gonna have to figure out a way to do at least 140 damage not scroll attack because this is only gonna block normal or this is only gonna neutralize uh, half of normal not scroll Wall of Ice, on the other hand, will be 60, you know, HP in battle, plus an additional 40, so that makes it 100 HP on top of Lambos. Makes it, again, hard to deal with. That's why I like to have two armits. I find that having more than two kind of clogs down um, all the other stuff that you need, so that's why I only uh, hold two of them. You can add more if you want. Yes, uh, items increase your base HP. And what it basically, the, the too long didn't read version is... Land bonus HP is a red bar in battle. You see that on the HP at the end, you'll see that red bar. It doesn't really add it to your creature, it's more like a buffer zone. Um, the green HP that you have in battle, the main HP bar, that's what you call your base HP. If, for instance, somebody decided to use a, uh, what is it, Spark Ball or Spark Bolt, which is a scroll item that does 40 damage, Fire Drake would be dead. If you can use something like Armit, or any tool, or weapon, or armor that can increase your HP, you can survive a scroll. 
anything that adds HP to your creature in battle adds it to your base HP and protects you from scroll attacks. Because scroll like penetrate ignores that land bonus, what I call the buffer zone. It literally it literally does penetrate the buffer zone and hits the creature. So whatever your your HP at that time is not not your maximum HP, but whatever your your base HP is at that time, if the scroll or penetrate can reduce that to zero, you die. One of the shields that I use to protect myself is Magic Shield. It's a twofold shield. First, it increases your HP by 30, and then it neutralizes scroll attacks. So, why you can use this for scrolls and Use it for non-scroll attacks. Why would you use this for non-scroll attacks? You would use this for penetrating attacks. Because if something has penetrate, it'll also ignore the land bonus. So being able to quickly add 30 HP to your creature makes this item pretty invaluable. That's why I include it. It's, it's a two for one. It's going to increase your HP and if they decide to hit you with a scroll attack, it's neutralized. And if they decide to hit you with a penetrating attack, odds are you're probably going to survive, unless it's a really strong creature. Now for neutralizing normal attacks, we have two different shields, Magma Shield and Storm Shields. Magma Shield, if it's equipped to a fire or earth creature, it neutralizes all normal attacks. And Storm Shield does the same if it's equipped to a water or air creature. If you buy Rich Packs, you can actually start, I think it's Sphere Shield, but I don't remember what block that came from. Um, Sphere Shield kind of does the exact same thing. It reduces your strength to zero, and then it neutralizes all non-scroll attacks. And it is a really amazing card. Sphere Shield is incredi incredibly helpful, and it does come from the City of Salvation uh, block. Basically puts your attack to zero and then neutralizes all non-scroll attacks. So it's great in the sense that you can use that with a book like this if you had non-fire, non-water creatures. Like if I didn't have fire creatures and I had neutral creatures in here, well I'm not going to put storm shield on it because it's not going to work. That's where uh, spear shield can come in handy. And the last item we have is Sword of Pluck. Sword of Pluck is probably one of the best offensive items that you can use in Cold Seth Revolt. Sword of Pluck instantly gives your creature plus 40 attack, and if your creature is normal rarity, it's a critical hit. So, putting Sword of Pluck on Fire Drake. Fire Drake is strange, so it's not going to get the critical, but it's going to hit for 70. Put it on your Gas Cloud. Let's say you want to attack someone with your Gas Cloud. Gas Cloud with Sword of Pluck will do 105 damage. Because it's going to do 30 strength, plus the 40 from the Pluck, plus an additional 35 because it's a critical. Critical is one and a half times uh, attack. So it's going to do an additional 35, so it's in total attack is going to be 105 damage, okay, from the gas cloud. The 
Next creature that you can use is big creatures like King Varon, or if you have uh, Earth creatures, Great Tusker. Great Tusker neutralizes uh, creatures with first attack, and they both have 60 strength, meaning King Varon on offensive with a sword of pluck will do 150 damage. Uh, I was running a version of this book with yellow creatures, or well, air creatures. I was running it with two centaur and two knights. Centaur is a 30 strength air creature with first attack. So that thing's going to do 105 damage. And it's going to attack first. So it's really great on, on defense. If your opponent doesn't have a first attack creature, you can slap Sword of Pluck on your Centaur. And Centaur has another ability that states any item that you equipped on it gets recycled back to your book. Now I think Centaur actually has to survive for that to happen. But odds are you're hitting for 105 damage. It's going to be dead. So, Sword of Pluck is extremely helpful. It's extremely helpful for really any creature. Um, if King Tortoise is on a huge land, and I gave it vitality, and I know that it's going to survive. It, unfortunately, it attacks last, but I mean, I could give it Sword of Pluck. Now let's look at spells. First spell we have in this book is Binding Mist. Uh, adds paralysis to target creature. It does quite a bit of things, as you can see. Creatures cannot attack, they can't use items, and they can't use any abilities. And these abilities are also secret arts. So if you had a creature that had a, a secret art ability that, um, let's say Burnacle, which puts blind onto target creature, which cuts uh, Tolfi in half. You can paralyze it, so now that ability can't be used anymore. You can also use this on... Like, if you're going against a gas cloud, and it neutralizes half the attack from normal... half the, the damage from normal attacks. If you paralyze gas cloud, that ability does not trigger. Any creature that says, you know, that has an ability, when it's paralyzed, it doesn't work. Um, Gelatinous Wall's Battle End ability will never work. Uh, Wall of Ice will never get that plus 20 HP in battle. I don't know what happens if you paralyze an Old Willow or a Kelpie. I would assume that you can't get stopped by them because their abilities can't trigger. Next spell we have is Fat Body. You reduce the strength of a creature by 20, but you increase its maximum HP by 20. So when you increase a creature's maximum HP by 20, their base HP also goes up by 20. So if I were to put this on Kelpie, Kelpie would be 10 strength, 50 HP on top of whatever, you know, land boost, land boost it might have. Okay, Fat Body is literally here for Kelpie, and it's here for Gas Cloud and or Wall of Ice. I would much rather put it on Gas Cloud and Kelpie, because then you're giving Gas Cloud 50 HP in battle, so the opponent has to do 100, not including land boost. Next spell we have, we have two Foresights. Foresights let you look at the top six cards of your hand, or your, your book, and lets you draw one. Um, this is really great, like if you're looking for a Kelpie, if you're looking for an Old Willow, or if you need one of these shields, like you know, oh crap, they're coming. Uh, get that out. Like, quickly. You know, that card will come in handy. Next spell we have are two gifts. Gift is probably one of the best drawing and mana gaining cards in the game. Mana is great, 
you know, you pay zero, you gain 50 mana per lap. But Gift is better. Gift, you pay 100 magic, you gain 50, and you draw a card based on your rank in the game. Meaning, if you're playing a four-player game, and you're in second place, you're going to gain the 100 mana back, and you get to draw two cards. If you're in last, you gain 200 magic, and you draw four cards. Gift is really invaluable. It should be in basically just about every book. Okay, next book we have our haste. Never, ever, ever use fly. Don't do it. Uh, the fly spell in this game sucks. Always use haste and holy words, like holy word three, holy word one, three, six, eight. Uh, I use holy word eight and haste. Haste will let you roll six to eight for the next die. The next dice roll. It used to be for two rolls, but they changed it to one. Uh, next we have Holy Word 8. Uh, Target Scepter will move eight spaces on their next roll. Next spell we have is Magic Shelter. Magic Shelter adds anti spell to target creature. It can't be targeted by spells, and it will be treated as if it had the defense ability, or defensive ability. So unfortunately, you know, that means whatever you give Magic Shelter, it's vulnerable to Battering Ram. Right? Battering Ram instant kills any defensive creature, if it hits. Uh, you can protect that by neutralizing or reflecting all damage. But at least with this, with neutralizing, yeah, you don't have to worry too much, but it is something to worry about. So one of the greatest things about Magic Shelter is, normally, if you have an enchantment on a creature, like if, you, if I were to put Fat Body on Gas Cloud, somebody could use Exile, which will return target creature Turn target enemy scepter creature to their hand if they have an enchantment on them and if they don't have a summoning uh, restriction. So creatures like Kelpie and Old Willow are fine because they have sun summoning restrictions. Anything that comes after the number amount for G, at the top right where it says 80 and then a water symbol, that's a restriction. So cards like Exile won't work on it. But anything else that you give an enchantment to, yeah, it ain't doing so good. But that's what's so great about, you know, Magic Shelter. You can also put Magic Shelter on your Kelpie. Like, give your Kelpie Fat Body, which gives it plus 20 HP, and then Magic Shelter it. Magic Shelter the, uh, Old Willow. So they can't just do Magic Bolt to it for 20 damage. We have two Shatters. Uh, shatters are in... Oh, whoop. Let's not skip Relief. Uh, we have two Relief. Relief is one of the most underrated cards in the game. First things first, it lets you swap two creatures on the board. In their position. So if you had... Uh, let's say I had a Old Willow on a level 1 Fireland, and I had King Varn on a level... Four. I could relief them. I could put King Varon on Old Willow's land and Old Willow on King Varon. So now Old Willow's on the level four. So now anytime somebody hits Old Willow, it's now going to be hitting a level four land. Other thing it does is if somebody puts a nasty enchantment on your creature, you can relief that creature and remove the enchantment. Anytime you move a creature, whether it be a territory movement command or it be from relief, you will remove enchantments. So you can remove good enchantments, you might not want to do that, but you can remove nasty ones. Like if somebody put Paralyze, you could relief it with another creature and remove that. If somebody were to put Poison, like if somebody used the uh, spell Plague, you can remove Poison from two creatures instantly. If somebody were to put Senility, 
on your creature. Relief it. Next spell we have is Shatter. Shatter lets you select a item or spell card from target enemy scepter's hand and destroy it. Shatter is great for hitting... If you're going to attack and you know they have something to reflect damage, neutralize damage, you want to destroy that. Otherwise, I like destroying um, offensive items. I love destroying scrolls. This I use this for scrolls the most. Like if I see somebody with, you know, one of the uh, 40 strength scrolls or one of the two exponential strength scrolls like Burning Rod, um, I always destroy them. Next spell we have is Vitality. Vitality will add 20 strength and 20 HP to creature in battle. Using Vitality lets you draw a card. Just using Vitality alone for the drawing card saved me. I was playing, uh, actually 4-8, I was playing the quest with this. The enemy had a scroll in their hand. I had no armor to protect myself from it. I used a uh, gift to turn before, didn't get it, and I had to get that I had to get magic shield in my hand, and thankfully, when I played Vitality on a creature, I played actually Vitality on the creature I needed to protect, uh, I got the magic shelter. Thankfully. Enemy tried to use it. It got denied. And the last spell we have is Wind of Hope. Kind of like Gift. Uh, pay 40 magic to draw two cards. Alright. Let's start a solo match and see how this one does. Let's go Zox. Um, yeah, let's stick it on. Let's keep it on random map. See how we do. Ooh. This map is... Rather interesting. It was Siege Tower, so that's not too, too good. Last, what does Zox have in his hand? Bullets, Raven, Centaur, Chain, Chain, Longsword. I really don't care all that much. Let's see what we can get. We can get, uh, hmm. Could get Sword of Pluck, but that's coming next anyway, so... Kind of a waste. I will take Vitality. Alright, I'm actually gonna go here and put King Varon down. Even though I do need Firelands, I can eventually change it or relief it. It's your turn. The situation requires it. Um, knowing anything, I'm probably just going to uh, change the element to fire. Wow, okay, I can, I can stop rolling too anytime now. Well, at least everybody's rolling too. Since I already have Holy one Holy Word 8 in my hand, I might as well use this one. Advance to the next gate. The final gate awaits you. Discard your cards. It's your Alright, let's see how we do. I'm actually gonna save that fat body. Uh, Make myself roll six. Well, six to eight. The final gate awaits you. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next journey. It's your turn. 
Alright, I'm going to draw two cards. Nice, 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 nice. Put down gelatinous wall, and uh... I'm gonna get rid of Fat Body for right now, because I kind of need everything else in my hand. We'll see how this goes. Alright, I'm going to put down Wall of Ice on the Fireland. Even though Wall of Ice is not going to get an HP boost, I'd rather have the Red Ogre in my hand, because Red Ogre uh, is normal. So if I attack with it with Sword of Pluck, I can do quite a bit of damage. Uh, it would do 120 attack. Actually gonna go this way and then I'm going to put King Tortoise down. The one thing you have to worry about is that Centaur down there actually has first strike. Well, it's called attacks first. I'm just so used to first strike and magic the gathering. Cool. And I'm going to put down Red Ogre. Red Ogre has less attack than King Varon. They're both normal. So I can use either one for, um... Hmm. Land on my King Varon. I can use either one for... Okay. He's going to attack. I will use the armor. Hmm. I miscalculated. I thought it did 10 more HP. Guess not. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um. Yeah, I I'm gonna keep that King Varn in my hand. It'll do a lot more damage. Terrain change this to fire. And one thing you need to know about maps like this that have so many different places to go is where are you going to put your creatures? Where are you going to put something like Kelpie, like Wall of I or um, Old Willow? Like I can put Old Willow here on the two fire, or Kelpie on the two water, and they never have to land on it. They can literally go from north to west, all the way down here to east, and up to north. They never have to go this way. They never have to touch this, because as soon as they hit north, they can just go up. So you always have to understand, and if you're trapping a map, where do you put things? Well, you don't want to trap this bottom area. Because trapping this area, they literally, they don't have to go this way. So you want to trap things like this. These five blue square here. And then these, well this was red, and these red squares here. Or these little points up here. And why these points? They have to hit it. Right? Because if they go from north... And they say, okay, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to west, but I don't wanna go up. They're just gonna go left. Or down and left. Problem is, is when they go to west, they're gonna have to hit here. Same for this way. So maps like this, you have to see on the fly, you know, what can you do? Where can you put it?
Tornado is actually a really great creature. It's defensive, but it attacks first. Alright, Zox, what do you have in your hand? You do have two long swords. Um... I'm actually going to use Holy Word 8 on myself. I don't want to use or lose anything else just yet. I will pump up Gelatinous Wall to level 3. Uh, have Magic Shield. Gelatinous Wall can use armor. Unfortunately, he didn't hit it. Would have been great. I would have gained more mana. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to Magic Shelter the, the Jelly Wall. onto water. And the reason why I moved it onto water is I want to I want to build up chains. Right, so now gelatinous wall is 200 and something. Um, we can actually take it out. Well, gas cloud's gone. <laughs> If it was on fire, it would have survived by 10 HP. In the end, not a big deal. Um, not a big deal at all. Okay. Level up the ogre. Discard. I'm gonna discard the other magic shelter. Unfortunately. What does Zonx have? Zonx does have chain mail. Um He also, unfortunately, has two weapons, too. So... I mean, technically, it's probably better if I go this way, too. Um... Nah... I mean, technically, I could kill this creature. Um, I'm not worried about that one right now. Ah, uh, he missed the lightness wall. Alright, gift. Ah, just over. So you know what? I'm going to take it out. Now I need to use the magic shield. Bingo! Alright. Ooh! <laughs> I'm like, oh crap. Now I see Drill Lance. I am shattering that Drill Lance. Drill Lance like Scroll can penetrate your land bonus. Which is not really what I want to have happen.
Um, territories. We'll level that up. Let him go. I mean, when face to face with the wall of ice right there, he can take that out. Man, all I'm getting is just the freaking. Alright, let's see what we can get now. I'm gonna put the red ogre there, get rid of one of Sword of Pluck. So, right now, we're a little bit behind. I'm not surprised by that, to be honest. Not at all. to get rid of the Sword of Pluck. Now, whenever I get an Old Willow or Kelpie, I can trap one of two areas right now. I can trap the... where the Red Ogre is over here with Old Willow, and I can trap where Gelatinous Wall is. That's bad. That's level 5. Um, thankfully for me... I can paralyze the shit out of it. I mean, it's still going to get the HP boost, so it's going to get 90 HP. I do not have anything right now, and I also don't have a Sword of Pluck. I've been getting rid of them. So this is, is not really good, because it's in one of those choke points that I was talking about. Oh, good. Okay, but I would really like to have Kelpie. Even better. To the next gate. We're going this way. I'm going to exchange this with Old Willow. The right creature in the right place. Discard I am going to get rid of one relief. And one storm shield. What are you attack? Oh, you're placing a thing down there. Okay. Siege towers let you uh, assault an area and or place a creature down. All right, we're gonna swap these two around. So Old Willow is now on the Big Fireland or Big Fireland. It's like a level two or three. Can I do anything with it? No, I cannot. Okay. Uh, one thing I can do is I can upgrade this. But I'd rather not. Um, no, I'm keeping my shields, thank you. I would love if I can get uh, a magma shield. That'd be great. So he's gonna go for Old Willow. I'm actually gonna let him... Take it. I think he has a battle axe. Yeah. I only have one shield that I can use for Old Willow right now. So Old Willow is getting the fat body. So its HP is now 60. Um, next turn, I'm going to give myself haste. Oh, he landed on my little my little buddy. 
Okay, um, he's going to use Battle Axe, so I'm going to have to use Magic Shield. I, I have to survive. And it looks like I would have actually survived, but look at how much magic I'm going to earn from this. 380. Because remember, it's one of the greatest things about Gelatinous Wall is it gains five times the magic based on how much damage you take. So he literally just gave me a crap ton of magic. What items do you have? Yeah, I'm not... I'm not taking it on. This old willow is now going to be level 5. So, old willow is 60 HP plus the additional 50, so it's 110. And then I'm going to hit it with vitality to give it an additional 20 HP in battle. And that's one of the greatest things about uh, vitality using... Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so even though I don't really have great shields, I don't have any shield I can use for it, uh, I can instantly give it, you know, boost up with the HP. Unfortunately, I actually win the match. I just realized. What? What? Wait a minute, Zonx? I just realized. Holy shit. I actually lose the game. Ah, <sighs> never mind. I was actually wrong. Um... Zonx actually beat me because I wasn't paying attention. So we are actually going to forfeit this match and start again. I was not paying attention and unfortunately... Whoops the daisy. Then again, I didn't have any freaking prayer. Uh, I discarded my only two weapons too late in the game. Let's start this shit again! Ugly ass map is this. Oh god, I hate these maps. And now I'm like, now this is moving so freaking slow. Uh, no, as soon as I can exit out. We're not doing this map. This map literally just dropped 15 frames. Yeah, this map is actually pretty crap. Not this hand, but this map. Um, let's start this again. Uh, unfortunately, I'm crashing everything. Jesus. I go to restart and everything just crashed. Okay. Yeah, that map... Oof. I literally, for some reason, dropped uh, 15 frames. For no reason. Other than it was probably just so much crap. Let's do that shit again. Um... Don't give me 15 frame drop map. It's your turn. Okay, you give me this map. You suck. <laughs> this map is the same map you would face on Quest or Mission 8. This is actually the map when you beat, you unlock Rich Packs that I was talking about earlier. Uh... Okay, so in order to quote-unquote trap an area you have to literally trap both like there and here and that's the plan um, put old willow here or old willow here and kelpie here uh, 
I'm going this way only so I can put gas cloud down and give me at least one fire land. This map is pretty damn huge. This map on one on one is probably a bad map to do. And it's only 7,000 map goal, so it's literally going to be like whoever gets there quicker. Um, why do you? So I need one water or one more fire. I need both technically, one water and one more fire, but if I can get one... God, stop giving me... What do I have? What are my options? Oh god, I'm gonna get another old willow. Okay. I'm going to take the King Advance to the next gate. King Waron is going to go right here. Now I have the two fire requirements for Kelpie, or Old Willow. Uh, Kelpie, I still need one more Waterland. And I have two old bullets. What does Zox have in his hand? You have a battle axe and a long sword. Ah. Uh, I'm gonna hold off for now. I'm gonna place an old willow here just to see what he does. Literally, just to see what he does. Because he technically doesn't have to land on it. I think what I should do is at least shatter his battle axe. And then power this up, maybe? Yeah, pump that up to 70. Okay, so odds are he's probably never gonna land there, but that's good. Because remember, I there are relief in here, so I can swap things around as needed. to get on a water land because I need Kelpie down uh, in this bottom area and literally this map the only real way to beat this is to trap one whole area hey Neko how's it going damn it I want my Kelpie Fire Drake down and then swap that for water. Soon ish. Still gonna take the sword of luck. I'm 
put you there. Discard your cards. I'm gonna get rid of that since I don't have any water creatures in play right now. That Netflix though. Gas cloud. Um, and my gas cloud is dead. Oh no wait. It's survived. Sunks. 40. No. Move the creature here. Huzzah. Not keeping more land. Taking your land. But the important question is, is, is it going to be a good movie? I was able to land on water, I can put Kelpie down. So, when I, if I can land on these three water territories right here at the bottom, uh, Kelpie is going to go down there. Now I only move one. This is great. I need the old willow up here and Kelpie over there. Um, wonderful. This is still moving kind of slow, but not too bad. Where can I get to? Okay, good. I can land on water. Let's go! Advance to the next gate. Place Body the couple. Advance to the next gate. Level it up. My lands grow ever stronger. I want... Wait, what do I get? What can I get? What can I get? Let's take Squeeze. Move 
All right, bye, Neko. Have fun. Discard. Okay, what are we getting rid of? I will get rid of. Squeeze. Oh, I just dropped rings. I'm gonna squeeze uh, this spike shield out of his hand. He gets 150 mana from that squeeze, but he can't use it on me now. So now if I go to attack him, uh, he can't reflect damage back to me. I know you're not going down, you're gonna go up. There we go. So now all I need to do is just get Old Willow on Fireland below. Gain two. Let's gain 100 mana and draw two cards. Magic shield. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next turn. Now, I'm still losing again. I have to freaking get 12. I don't need high and I get high. Thanks, game. Advance to the next gate. That's precisely what I did not need. I'm probably going to lose because I, I keep skipping the one piece that I need, and it's really annoying. One good thing, I might be able to get uh, a Waterland now. 
might be able to, or Fireland. So I might be able to now trap in an, er an, an entire area. And if I get a six or a seven, I hit a Fireland without having to worry about fighting. But I could go that way, but that's bad. I'm going here with Old Willow. Jesus, he has the thing already? Well, unfortunately, I lose the game again. This is enough to take it out. Like maybe I can drop him down enough. Okay, so he is down enough. Unfortunately, he landed right on it. And not before. So yeah, I unfortunately lose the map again. Big maps like... What the hell? I wasn't paying attention and I didn't use my armor. It doesn't matter. I forfeited the game. Giant maps like this for one... One on one? Nope. That, it's never gonna work. <sighs> Alright, I'm gonna have to actually select a map that's not gonna completely screw either person. Let's do Simple Branch. The first map, the first match I got screwed by basically drawing all of my attack cards when I don't need it. And then the second screw over was now I have no freaking cards. God. The second one was um, just not being able to trap an area quick enough. And now I not having any creatures, this is bad. That's why this is just a beginner book to get you through quest. This is by no means to help you with um, beating multiplayer at all. Green. I need to get somebody on Waterland now. Unfortunately, this is this is the only shit that I keep doing. It's just landing on spots I can't do anything with. Alright, so I can at least start having something in fire. You know what's funny is I actually never had any problems with this book until starting this stream. Because I've, I've only lost one match with this book. And that's literally it. I've only lost one match. Foresight, see what's coming up. Ooh. Okay, so Old Willow's coming up. So I'm gonna take a Vitality. 
Well, this is gonna be a little quicker. You've earned a reward. Good luck on your next Also, that last map we did, which was Quattro, is technically uh, a four-player map in the quest. And it has a higher magic than 7,000. I'm leaving all the things at 7,000. So this map really is not that good for seven grand. For doing the one-on-one. -on -one. Especially if your requirements is to trap areas? Yeah, no. Um. Oh, this is really bad for them. Not bad, not bad for me. Uh. Level that up. We're going to discard, uh, Sword of Black. Actually gonna put down old Willow and hope he does not land on it. Good. Um This is the proper way to hurt someone. Because now old Willow is on fire. Well on fire land. So he's obviously going to attack, and he's going to use a weapon. Thankfully, I knew I had Magma Shield. Which will neutralize it. Eh. Um, again, this book is not that great. It's not great for one-on-one. -on -one, or, not great for, for multiplayer. You could probably use it for multiplayer, but I wouldn't recommend it. Would not recommend this book at all. The final gift awaits you. My lands grow ever stronger. The final gift awaits you. He's actually going to move it onto Old Willow. can hit me for 60. Um, I kind of don't want to take any damage. Oh, excuse me, he can hit me for 70. I kind of don't want to lose any HP. So yeah, he stole 140 magic, unfortunately for him. He... Oh no, that's right, he has to land on it. Lucky. Let me... Paralyze this creature so he can't do that again. Um, interesting fact, I'm now at zero mana. First, uh, keep it. Advance to the next gate. I'm gonna fat body the old willow. My lands grow ever stronger. It's your turn. That's vitality. Here we go. Build up the fire chain. My land 
You know what's funny? It's like, could technically lose. Uh, depending on what his specter rolls. So let's hope I get some good armor. Dropping frames again for some odd reason. Unfortunately, I can't use Armit. I'll put Fire Drake here. Um, I can't use duels. Hey, um, I'll get rid of Vitality. He already has Vitality. Ooh, he actually has Drill Lance, so he can penetrate. Not that good. I. I probably lost this, to be honest. Um, because he's going to use the Drill Lance, which is going to penetrate the plus 50. I survived by, what, 7 HP? Seriously, that's all I survived by, was 7 HP. Spectre is really that wild card. You don't know what to expect from it. So, Old Willow is pretty damn damaged. Let's swap these two. For the time being. Advance to the next gate. Discard your cards. It's your turn. You know what's funny is I could technically swap it back. I'm kind of annoyed at the fact that I keep dropping frames these past few days, and I don't know why. It's just randomly doing it. Well, that's one way to win. Again, this, this book is not going to let you win matches quick. Uh, this book does struggle, but again, this is Yellow Seal. Uh, this is super basic. Let's put this back on. Um, this is a super basic book. Now, I'm gonna show you some cards that you could replace, or add to, to possibly make this better for uh, AI once you start getting rich packs. And also maybe use these for um, multiplayer. Okay, so let's go look at items we can use. Okay. Um, obviously you can use, you know, armor, like diamond armor, which gives you plus 60 HP. You could stick to uh, Old Willow only, so kelp or so fire only, or kelpie only, which would be water only, which means you would want to have stuff like um, magma shield. You would want storm shield and would want to keep the magma shields out. When you're buying rich packs though, unlock another shield called sphere shield. Sphere Shield states that you neutralize normal attacks. Your strength becomes zero. Okay. Um, 
In my opinion, it's probably best to keep it either Old Willow or Kelpie. And then whatever you keep, like let's say you're keeping Kelpie, have four Storm Shields and four Spear Shields. If you keep Old Willow, have four Spear Shields and four Magma Shields. Okay. If you're in the attacking mood, uh, you can use stuff like Tanfa, which lets your creature attack twice. So something like King Varon would actually do 120 damage, because he would attack twice. Um, you can also use Ragdoll, which has two abilities, and this item is great. Now you can't use this for Old Willow and Kelpie. Ragdoll is tool. Old Willow and Kelpie cannot use tools. I think they can, I think Kelpie can in Saga and they might both be able to use them in the PS2 version. I think they changed it in Revolt, where they can't use tools. Um, there is an item that'll let creatures use tools for like five rounds, so you, you could technically use it, but Ragdoll is great for a lot of creatures. So, it neutralizes scroll attacks, and then it also neutralizes creatures with greater strength than equipped creature. So, like the Gelatinous Wall, for instance. If you kept using Fat Body, and its strength kept going down 20, its HP kept going up 20, well, you use Fat Body once, Gelatinous Wall has no strength. Your opponent's creature will probably always have a better, <laughs> a higher strength than zero. Okay, so you, but you really wouldn't want to neutralize it on Gelatinous Wall. But something like Wall of Ice, you know, get that on a level 5, you know it's it can't use armor, but it can use tools. So, you know, you can have something land on it, and it's like, okay, neutralize. Especially now with how good Greed is, you know, toll fee is one and a half times. Put that on something like Wall of Ice, drop Wall of Ice's strength to zero by using Fat Body multiple times, and then in battle use Ragdoll. Okay? Um, you can also use Magma Armor and Storm Armor. Magma Armor increases HP by 20 times for each Fire and Earth territory you own. So if you own five Fire or and or Earth territories, you could increase your HP up 100. Okay. These cards are, like they, I would, I would use them in Old Willow and I would use, uh, the Storm one in Kelpie. Another great armor you can use, well you can also use Spike Shield, which reflects half the damage your creature would take. So let's say somebody were to do 70 damage to your old Willow or Kelpie. Well, Kelpie is basically dead, Kelpie's 30, but if it's on water, right, it's only going to take 35 because the other 35 would go back. Squid Mantle is another great armor you can use. HP goes up 40, and you disable opponent's attack bonus. Now what does that mean? Basically, there's a creature called Cockatrice. There's other ones that have abilities, but Cockatrice, when it hits your creature, turns your creature into a wall of stone. Cockatrice can turn your creature into a wall of stone, and use something like Battering Ram at the same time. Battering Ram is a weapon that states that I think it's like plus 30 HP, plus 30 strength, and it instant kills defensive creatures. Like 100% insta kills. Well, Old Willow is automatically defensive, so you wouldn't want to use this. You would want to completely reflect it with or neutralize it with something like Sphere Shield. Okay. 
But what if they were going against Kelpie? And they were going to use the Cockatrice Battering Ram, Ram combo. Have Cockatrice turn your Kelpie into Wall of Stone and then nail it for, you know, uh, whatever damage and then kill it because it'll be a defensive creature. Well, this will block the ability to transform. So that's another great armor. It's also great that it increases 40 HP, so it increases your base HP. Um, let's see. You can also, you know, use this for creatures where it disables all effects and, ab and abilities. Uh, again, Armit is great for Gas Cloud, Wall of Stone, you know, anything that can use a tool, increase its HP, you're looking at a really great card. Oh look, here's a uh, Battering Ram, plus 30 strength and an instant death 100% against defensive creatures. Not good. Um, you could use, you know, standard Chainmail, uh, Diamond Armor. You have a lot of cards in your hand, you could use uh, Force Anklet. You can use Magus Mirror, increase HP. But that's if your creature can use uh, a scroll. You could use, you know... Neutral Cloak to add HP. You can use um, Reactive Armor, which increases your HP by 30, and then destroys opponent's weapon. Scale Armor, together with Plate Mail. Plate Mail plus 50. You know, there's great ways to protect your, your creatures with, with armor, depending on what your creatures can do. Like if they can use, um, if they can use scrolls, if they can't use scroll, or uh, if they can use tools, if they can't use tools. Here's a great creature, Bird Maiden. If your creature can move, Bird Maiden will let you move anywhere by giving your creature distant movement. What distant movement is, is if you've ever played Call the Steps of Past, and it's in here, called uh, Spirit Walk. Spirit Walk technically gives your opponent what's known as, or your creature, what's known as Distant Movement, where you can move your creature to any location on the board. Well, you can't use it on Old Willow, because Old Willow is defensive. Defensive creatures can't move through the, the movement command. But you can use it on Kelpie. And why this is important... Oh, wrong creature. Why this is important is... Let's say somebody magic bolted a Kelpie. Or... And it, and it was already damaged and it died. Or... They used some ability to get rid of your Kelpie. What if you had a Kelpie in play? Somewhere else. Well... It, the only way you a creature loses land level is if you sell it off. Kind of like if you're mortgaging in Monopoly. And it doesn't matter if somebody lands on it because it's mortgaged. They, they, they're not getting... you're not getting anything from that, right? Well... In cul de -sept, if the creature is destroyed, the land keeps the same value. So you can move a Kelpie right on that land. Or if they got rid of something else, you can move that creature right on that land. That's why in the GP farming guide, there's Bird Maiden. The quickest thing to do is, you know, one of the, one of the things you can do is put a creature on a water land. Let's say it has Vigorous, so you can upgrade it whenever you want. Upgrade that land to level 3, move that creature off the land. The land keeps the same fee, the same value, the same, uh, like the same 
honor value the same toll fee and the same level. Well, you can put a Kelpie down anywhere, give your Kelpie distant movement, and when your Kelpie is no longer fatigued, move it. Right on there. One of the quickest ways to do that. So that creature does help with Kelpie books. Okay. If you're attacking, you can use stuff like Firebeak. Okay. Like you can put Firebeak in these in this book. Because you are using fire creatures. You can get rid of the uh, the Drake for the beak. Fire beak attacks first, and it critical hits air and water, and it penetrates air and water. So if you have a, a, a creature like like that when the person had Blitz Raven down, right? And Blitz Raven was, I think at that time, you know, 50, 40 or 50 HP with the in with the land boost. Right? So fire beak is gonna hit for 50. But it's going to critical because it's air, so it's 75, and then it's going to ignore the land boost. The only way the opponent's going to survive is if they can either totally neutralize it, if they can reflect it, if they can neutralize it, if they can neutralize any part, if they can reflect any part, or um, if they can increase their HP quite a bit. Odds are, though, the fire beak is just going to instant kill anything. Well, anything weak enough. Okay, so you could use this in this book. You can also use... Um, now, these are for when you have, you know, later sets. Uh, you can use Knight Errant. If you have an Earth book, like if you if you made this a pure magma willow book... So it would evolve into Arm Paladin, and then for Knight Errant by itself, it reflects half the damage received from normal attacks. You know, this thing is used in a lot of books. This thing is really good. Um, you can also use you know stuff like Creeping Flame. Creeping Flame has a secret art of its own, and it can move to a neighboring land. So if you had Creeping Flame next to Fire, you can move it on there. Or, if you put... Yeah, creeping Flame has 50 HP. So Creeping Flame, you put that on a Fire Land, and you increase that to level 3. And you use its secret art to move. Remember, Bird Maiden has a secret art. So now you can, you know, move something else on that Fire Land. Uh, another great card, if you can put it in, is Burnacle. It's literally a fiery um, barnacle. It uh, is a secret art known as Blind. Blind is old cul de sept ability called the Fog, where it cuts a toll, f uh, toll value, a toll fee in half. So if you had somebody that was on the board with you know, 700 and something toll fee, you can cut that down to 350 something. You know, if somebody had uh, one that was 2,800, now it's 1,400. So on, so on, and so forth. It's really great. Okay, so now let's look at other water creatures. Now, I talked about it before, and it's not in here. It's not in this version of the book. But this is Giant Nautilus. Strength is 10, HP is 70. And it can use armor. And you can use tools. So, you can make this thing, put this on like a level 3, right? Level 3 Waterland. This thing is already 100 HP. Not including any armor. Okay, this is a really great land holder. You can put in more gelatinous walls. Gelatinous wall is amazing. As you saw, I gained quite a bit of mana from that. Uh, you unlock Bloody Pudding. Bloody Pudding is is a rather interesting creature. Um, they limited they limited how much or what creatures you can put on it, but it has support water, earth, and air, so you can only use water, earth, and air creature. 
Bloody Pudding is a 20 strength, 20 HP creature. Well, Giant Nautilus has 70 HP. So, let's say I put down Bloody Pudding, and you went to attack, and I use Giant Nautilus. Right? Bloody Pudding has 20 HP. So I'm gonna gain I'm gonna gain 70 HP from the uh, the giant nautilus. So in battle it's 90 HP. Here's the thing: at the end of battle, bloody pudding's maximum HP is 90. Bloody pudding has an ability with its support that its maximum HP plus supporting creatures MHP maximum of 100. You can literally have a 20 strength, 100 bloody pudding in play pretty quickly. That's one of the ways you can use bloody pudding, is use that as in a really amazing uh, defensive creature. And bloody pudding ha can use basically anything except for squirrels. Okay, so you can use giant nautilus, you can use bloody penguin, um, you can use hippocampus. It has a secret art that evolves it into Kelpie. Um, you can add in some. You can add in a, a Rahab to increase your water and air creatures up uh, 10 HP. I originally did have one of these in the book. I removed it because I literally at that point in time only had one. Um, you know, you could use more wall of ice, but then you're going to need more armaments. You're going to need more tools. Okay, scrolls that you can use. Remember how I said you can't uh, move with offensive creatures? Well, you can, and you can even attack with chariot. Chariot will let you move any creature two spaces. What this means is, let's say you're about to pass the last gate needed for a lap. And if you had Kelpie on a Waterland, you'd increase that up to, let's say, level 5, and the ne and your opponent would, would hit that next turn, and you would definitely guarantee, you know, victory. Chariot, if, you know, Kelpie is two spaces away from water, you can Chariot Kelpie two spaces onto that Waterland, make your move, go past the lap, all your creatures then stand up, no longer fatigued, and then you can increase Kelpie's territory. Uh, you can also use Chariot for invading, for attacking, if something is two spaces away. Great card, really. Um, Greed is also great. Greed is way better now. Greed used to have poison on it, and poison then, I think, was in battle 10 or 20 HP is what your creature lost. Now poison makes your creature lose half of its... I think it's maximum HP. I don't even think it's its regular HP. I think it just loses half of its maximum. Okay, and they removed poison from greed. And added draw one card because greed is just or poison is just really powerful now so putting poison on greed is pretty it 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 would hurt a lot of people and a lot of people would probably complain all kidding aside people who've never played the game they'd be wondering what the heck is going on um you could add more magic shelters to make sure your creatures can't be targeted by spells or abilities um, well, but all you fat body would probably help more. You could, you know, start increasing HP of your creatures by 20. Yeah, the strength will go down by 20, so. You know, some things will actually wind up doing more damage. Maybe somebody has lunatic hair. If your creature has no strength at the end of battle, swap! 
so that could happen. Um, you yeah, have to be careful, but that body will will help. Um, let's see. You can use. Uh, I know, I know you're here. You can use Storm Shift. Like in the last, like in the first book, the Kelpie Farming book, which is way better than this one, okay? This is like your basic Old Willow slash Kelpie book, where the other one was a slightly advanced Kelpie Farming. Storm Shift is amazing. Storm Shift will turn any level 3 waterland into an airland, and any level 3 airland into a waterland. So let's say you had Kelpie down on a level on, a, on an airland. You can level that airland up to 3 and then swap it into water for cheap. Okay. Converting a level 1 any element land that's not multi. So if you convert fire, earth, air or water into one of the solid elements, of fire, earth, air, and water. It costs 300 at level 1, 400 at level 2, 500 at level 3, so on, so on. Okay? So that means that putting level 3 uh, air to water would cost you 500 mana. This thing only costs 120. Okay? Storm Shield is nice, or the, the Storm Shift is nice. Um. You can use Water Shift as well, if you want. You can use them both. Uh, they are both really good cards. Okay. Um, but basically, this, like I said, is the stock uh, Old Willow Kelpie book that I used for the quest. I think I used this for... All of chapter four. And yeah, there, there are a couple times that I had some issues, but for the most part, this book helped me win the the chapter four quest. And four eight, which is the last one in that chapter, the last main mission in that chapter, that's when you unlock rich packs. But yeah, uh, run wild with this, you know. Go how you want. Um, I would personally say, you know, instead of putting them both together like I did, stick to a Magma Willow book or a Storm Kelpie book. Meaning, Fire Earth book for Willow and Air Water for Kelpie. It's really hard doing both as you saw, having, you know, Old Willow on one area and Kelpie in another trying to trap people. <clears throat> I actually wound up losing two matches doing that. <laughs> well, especially on one, because one was just really hard because I just could not land on fire. But hey, it is what it is. Um, it's not quick. Like I said, this is this is not quick. And it's not even that good. It's literally just your basic beginning Kelpie Willow book. You could... You can get better cards than this quicker than I can. When I actually made this book, I spent more time farming for this book than anybody else. Um, there are many people who bought like maybe five standard packs and already got one Willow or one Kelpie. I literally s bought about 30 packs. 30, 35? Before I saw one Kelpie. And then it's probably another five packs after that that I got uh, two Willows, another Kelpie, and some Magic Shields and stuff. So I had a really bad farming experience with the books. So you might wind up being able to do better. If you do stick to a storm book, like Kelpie, so water and air, um, K 
keep the Sword of Plucks. And then what you can use are creatures like Centaur. Centaur attacks first at the battle end if your creature survives. Recycle equipped item to user's book. So put this thing on like a level 4 air land, right? Its HP is 80 in battle. Opponent goes to attack you. Let's say opponent cannot attack first. Well, they're screwed. Because you can equip Sword of Pluck on Centaur, critical hit them for 105. Odds are, your opponent is not going to survive. Um, Cornfolk, I mean, look, Cornfolk can do 105 damage. It's normal and it's 30. Okay, Sword of Pluck with normal creatures is pretty OP. Um, heck, look at Griffin, right? Griffin's gonna do 135 damage. Sword of Pluck. Same with Knight. Oh, uh, when you do get, you know, to the rich packs, one thing that can help with the air book is Lightning Dragons with Lord of Bane. Okay, so when you're going against water and earth creatures, you can have a secret art to reduce their HP by 20. Then you have Lord of Bane, which increases strength to air and water creatures, and it has a secret art, which, if there's a creature that has 30 or less strength, it's increased by 20. What that means is you can pop up the Centaur's strength to 50. And if there's creatures that have on the field that have 50 or more strength, you can reduce them to 20. Or to 30, I mean. Um, Mad Harlequin can also help you. If you have two creatures that are next to each other and somebody attacks one of them, because you have a creature next to that battle territory, your creature in battle will gain 20 strength and HP. That's what boost means. So it will literally boost uh, the surrounding creatures, or the it'll boost a creature to battle territory if there's if you own another creature right next to it. Um, so those are really great air creatures that you can add. You could add tornado. Remember, tornado is defensive, but it attacks first. The strength goes up 20, so it's automatically hitting for 40. You're gonna sort of pluck it for an additional 40, so it's gonna critical hit for 120. Uh, Yowie will critical hit for 120. Okay, so there's many different ways that you can go about this book. You can, there's many different ways you can go about just about any book. Okay, so this is, like I said, this is my book that I use for Quest uh, 4. <laughs> it was basically kind of used for half of uh, Quest 3 and all of Quest 4. It's not great. I will never sit here and tell you that this is a great book. This is not a great book. This book is ugly. This book struggles quite a bit, as you saw. But this book can at least get the job done. And it gets the job done a little quicker than other books could. Especially when it gets off right. Like if you're in an area that you can, you know, trap well with Willow and Kelpie, and you at least have the armor to survive, that will help. But yeah, uh, run with this book. Never look at a book that anybody uses and say, I'm gonna make exactly that book, because there, many people have different play styles. You might want to have a more aggressive Willow book. Or maybe you want to have a defensive book. Go for it. Um, I personally like defensive books more. I'm not a fan of attacking, really. Trust me, I, I, I will invade quite a bit. But I like being more defensive. And see that in Saga in one of the books I made, which was the Stop and Pay. That book was basically 99.99% .99 defensive. 
literally out of 15 or 60 matches, maybe I used it offensively in two or three matches. I like being defensive. Maybe you don't. So, I'm actually going to be ending the stream here because I don't know why my frames keep dropping. Quite a bit, actually. And I really don't know what's going on. Um, it's like all of a sudden. All of a sudden it goes from green to red like it just did. Drop more frames. I'm literally just watching it drop frames. Let me... Let me change one setting on OBS. Let's see what's going on. Don't know what's going on. Alright, let's see how this is doing. But yeah, the, the stream times are 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. I should change the schedule because it's really 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. slash, you know, or it probably should just be 10 p.m. It, dep it depends on how long book guides take, um, slash other streams. There's going to be a lot of book guides coming, though, so... There's going to be another book guide coming tomorrow. There's going to be another book guide coming just about every day I'm, I'm, I'm live. Um, I, I kind of have a feeling I know which one's coming. I just need to practice it more. Practice it at all, basically. So yeah, that is the literal beginner Kelpie Willow book. The book is super rough not that great, but it's a pretty good starting point for new people in Kelpie Willow books in general. You could stick to only Kelpie, you could stick to only Willow. If you do stick to Kelpie and, and or Willow, just one of them, I would recommend having its matching element because Magma Shield can um neutralize all non-scroll attacks if it's equipped on a fire or earth creature. Storm Shield is the same for water and air. So I would stick to those two. Splitting it up like I did, not really that great of a deal. But yeah. Um, there's gonna be, like I said, there's gonna be another book guide coming tomorrow. Still giving away DLC codes. I'm gonna see, actually... I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get more. I don't know. I wanna give more away. Yeah, uh, if you ever want more information on Coldacept, you can go to coldaceptcentral.com. You can get the link from the uh, banner below the stream, from the panel. Coldacept Central is the largest Coldacept website around, you can get information on any Coldacep game that is out. You can get information on book guides, um, combos, tricks. You can also join the Discord, and there's always people in Discord, so if you ever have any issues, questions, you can always ask there. And if you need to know cards on the fly, what they do as you're playing, if you always have Discord open, you can use my culture bot in Cold Set Central. All you have to do in that bot is type question mark card name like question mark bandit. You can also do it actually in this stream when I'm streaming at any given time by doing exclamation point card space name like card bandit. That too will give you information on any card in the game. Yeah, I don't know why I keep dropping frames. Oh well, I'll look into that. I just want to say, again, this book is not that good. 
it is super rough. I would never tell somebody to follow this book exactly. I would use this as a starting guide. Look at this book, see what you can do to improve it. I would also, like I said, stick to either Kelpie or Old Willow. When I made this book, I only had two, I had two Kelpie and two Old Willow. I figured, ah, I'll just put them both together. It, the result is not that great. If I had four Old Willow, I would have stuck with a Fire Earth only. If I had four Kelpie, I would have stuck with uh, Water Air only. But yeah, that is going to be it for tonight. I will be back tomorrow with another book guide. Next book guide that's coming is actually a little tricky. Um, it's a little bit better than this. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, also, um, I don't know when it's going to go live, but Cold Step Central will be getting the official soundtrack. I'm actually going to be uploading the... Um, Flack Lossless to my Dropbox, and then I'm going to send that to Andy Man. So, we'll have the soundtrack if you want it, the official soundtrack. Um, the metadata tags are have been updated. You shouldn't have any issue because. There's really nothing for it online. But yeah. I will be back tomorrow. If you have any questions, hop on the, uh, the Discord. You can actually get to it from here. And until then, I hope you all have a great time. Thanks for watching.